Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane of Teach Talk, where learning is fun and easy. If this is your first time watching our videos, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button so you'll get notified on our next videos. Welcome to Shensha Amazing! Kung saan pag-uusapan natin ang mga science concepts from grade 7 to grade 12, kasamang topics in general science, biology, chemistry, physics, and earth science. At dito, bidangagham! In our Shensha Amazing episode, we will be having a brief discussion or an introduction about the concept of taxonomy. We will be learning more about taxonomy when we proceed to higher sciences. But for now, let's start our discussion. Taxonomy is the science that deals with the discovery, nomenclature or naming, description, identification, and classification of organisms. It is probably the oldest of all biological disciplines. Taxonomists have to deal with a great number of plant, animal, and other species. At kung nagbabasa kayo sa mga biology books nyo, you might have noticed difficult names which are used to label organisms. For example, we have Pyrus malus for apple, Bambusa aridinarifiola for bamboo, Musa paradisicum for banana, and Ficus benghalensis for banyan. Why do we use scientific names? The use of common names for many organisms can be very confusing. Common names may refer to many kinds of organisms belonging to different species. They may also change from one country to another and from one language to the next. Through scientific names, we are able to name and organize species systematically. The convenience of naming clearly distinguishes one organism from another. Halimbawa, sa Pilipinas, iba-iba ang tawag sa isang species depende sa pinanggalingang probinsya. For example, this plant is called a coconut in English. It is called coco or cocotero in Spanish. In the Philippines, it is called miog in Tagalog, Lubi in Bisaya and Cebuano, Ngongol in Pampango, Iing in Itneg, and Inyog for Ibanag. To avoid confusion in identification, the scientific community decided to officially call this plant Cocos nocifera. Mula sa pangalan niyang Cocos nocifera, Pwede nating makuha ang iba pang levels of classification kagaya ng domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Ang ating mnemonics na gagamitin para hindi makalimutan ang levels of classification ay Dear King Philip, come over for good spaghetti. The initials of each word correspond to the levels of classification. Going back sa Cocos nocifera o sa coconut, ang kanyang domain ay eukaryota. Ibig sabihin, it is composed of eukaryotic cells. Ang kingdom ay plantae kasi isa siyang plant o tanim. Its phylum, spermatophyta, because it produces seed. Ang kanyang class ay monocotyledonae because it is a monocot. Ang kanyang order ay ericals, which is an order of flowering plants containing the single family, Airy cassie, which can grow as climbers, shrubs, tree-like, and stemless plants. Tinatawag silang palm. Ang kanyang genus ay cocos, which is a plant genus with the coconut or cocos nocifera as its only accepted living species. From this list, makikita natin ang classification ng coconut from the most general, moving down and being subdivided into smaller groups. The binomial system of nomenclature 
was adopted by Sir Carolus Linnaeus, and he stated that the scientific name of a species is composed of two Latin names, hence Coccus nocifera. The first part of the name, the generic name, identifies the genus to which the species belong, while the second part, the specific name or specific epithet, identifies the species within the genus. Through taxonomy and the binomial system of nomenclature, we are able to name organisms conveniently. Halimbawa, a dog o aso is called Canis familiaris in the scientific community. We also have the carabao. It is called Bubalus bubalis in science. Of course, let's not forget us, humans. Our scientific name is Homo sapiens. Let's have another trivia. In our discussion, paulit-ulit natin naririnig that we are using Latin names. But why do we use Latin? Taxonomists use Latin in giving scientific names to organisms because it is a dead language. As a dead language, Latin no longer evolves. The meaning and spelling of Latin words do not change through the years. Kaya ang mga scientific names na gumagamit ng Latin words are not likely to impart a different meaning even as time passes. Before we end this Shensh Amazing episode, let's have a quick recap of our discussion today. We briefly talked about taxonomy. Specifically, we discussed the definition of taxonomy. We learned about the scientific names of some organisms we commonly see in our country. We were introduced to the levels of classification, which we can remember by using the mnemonic Dear King Philip, come over for good spaghetti. And lastly, we explain the reasoning behind the using of Latin in scientific names. That ends our Shensh Amazing episode for today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video to your friends so that we can learn together. Bye!